So in accordance with the standing orders of Parliament, I wrote a letter to you yesterday requesting to attend the committee as a friend of the committee. And I want to thank you for accepting my request. That's what the standing order says, that you write to the chair of the committee. Initially, first I, mis I misunderstood. I wrote to the speaker, but I retrieved it. I wrote back to you. Having said, Chair, I have just one or two questions, Chair. First, Chair, according to the document provided by the minister, and, and you see, Chair, government is run through traditions and precedents. And the previous traditions and precedents, Mr. Chair, have shown that the former holders of the office of the vice president or deputy president had very few numbers of policemen or women, 22, 24, of, we are dealing with a case of 257 here, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Chair. 257, Chair. Chair, where I come from in my constituency, they are, the last census, the population was 204,000 people. And the number of police officers who are there are not more than 80, 70, 80 in my constituency. When I divided that by this 204, one police officer is guarding 3,300 people in a day, especially the night is worse. One policeman is guarding in my constituency 3,300 people, Mr. Chair, and here we are discussing 257. My question actually is not about the law now, because we have all agreed there is no law that guides how to assign a policeman to VIPs. But it's a question of morality. I want to ask the minister in charge of security whether this is moral to give one person 257, and people in my constituency have only 80 police officers with a very junk old police vehicle, which you have to push at night when it wants to wake up. <laughs> Secondly, Mr. Chair, I, was, uh, I saw the minister the other time revamping the private sector security, the so-called private sector, G4S, and other names. And why I thought he was revamping that private security so that they can guard private enterprises properly, so that they are regulated, and private enterprises are safe. Now, when the minister and, and the IG are deploying policemen to private premises, what will the G4S do? What will these private firms do? Because that is their work. You have taken policemen to butcheries, to guard butcheries. Surely, what will this... We have over 100,000 employees in the private sector, in the private, uh, you know, these private uh, security firms. What will those officers do if you are deploying to every hotel, every butchery, uh, a farm in uh, Taitata Veta, 2,500 acres of land with cows, you are deploying policemen there, hotels, policemen, everywhere policemen. What will these private citizens, what will they, what will they get, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Chair? So I want to ask him, how moral is that also? My question is based, laws are made to guide morality. Let's leave laws alone a lot. Let's now go to the morals of our, our society. Whether it is moral to, to deploy a policeman to guard your private enterprises, when we have over 100,000 Kenyans who are employed to do the Kazia private security. Lastly, Chair, lastly, Chair, Chair, it's very surprising that we have Kenyans who are not properly secured. Cattle wrestling in the Rift Valley, you know, theft everywhere. And then you can deploy 257 mem members, or, I mean security members, to Kuchunga, Shamba, ya, ya, ya Kuku, Shamba, ya Samaki, <laughs> eh? Nyumba, ya Mopango, ya Kando, Kalande, Chair, I'm done. I don't want to ask another question. No, no, the minister no. must apologize to Kenya, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Chair, why that happened? Honestly, he must apologize. Leave alone removing or deploying. He must tender an apology to Kenyans that it will not happen again. Uh, 